So previously in our Poppy Playtime character concept series, our main protagonist has been making their way through the Playtime Co. factory trying to find Poppy. But on their most recent journey, they've come into contact with creepy nightmare versions of the original characters. It seems that the factory still has a large amount of the red smoke lingering around. And the task of completely ridding the factory of the red nightmare gas has become too much for one person. The player has tried multiple times, but it seems hopeless at this point. The best way forward would be to avoid this gas altogether. So the player finds a nearby terminal that can show them the unaffected areas. It seems that all of them have been breached by the red gas. All but one. This area looks pretty large, and would take some time to get through. But at the moment, it seems like the only option to move forward safely. This area is simply labelled CL. The player doesn't know what this means, but regardless, they were sure to find out sooner or later. So they head down and make their way to the CL area. So far, so good. There doesn't seem to be any of the red gas lingering around in this place. But that doesn't mean there won't be other dangerous toys waiting for them in the CL area. Finally, they arrive at a large metal door. This door is locked and needs to be activated by multiple power node puzzles. So they get to work powering the puzzles and activating each of the electronic locks. This door is definitely locked tight. Whatever is behind here, they certainly didn't want it getting out. And the idea of that doesn't make our protagonist feel any better about the situation. Eventually they solve the last power puzzle and the door unlocks. It swings open and the player is free to walk inside. And when they do, they see something that fills them with dread. They now know what CL stands for. As they stare at the large sign in front of them, it reads, Welcome to Critterland. The player now realises exactly where they are. This place was meant to be a sanctuary for all the smiling critters to live. This included the original gang and all the other new members as well. But we all saw how well that worked out. Half of the other critters were forgotten about and forced to live in the deep dark depths. But it seems like the other lucky few made it into the Critterland Sanctuary where they can live safely. But as to if this place is safe for the player is another question. So now let's introduce our first inhabitant of Critterland. So this new smiling critter character is called Manic Monkey. This cute little monkey can actually be quite a handful. Hence his name, he is quite manic indeed. Manic Monkey. Who's ready to get crazy? Who's ready to get manic? He's always up for a wild time, but sometimes he can get too wild. Just give him a trusty banana and he should be fine. Scent Banana. So Manic Monkey was one of the lucky critters who made it into the Critterland Sanctuary. His other brothers and sisters were tossed away into the deep dark depths, but this forgotten critter escaped that fate. So now he lives in Critterland with the other lucky few but the player would be far from lucky. So, like all the others, Manic Monkey never became one of the original Smiling Critters. As we all know, there's a whole bunch of different critters, and a lot of them didn't make the cut. The same goes for Manic Monkey. So, now he just roams around Critterland. But since the Sanctuary has been cut off from everyone for so long, no one knows what happened here. Were all of them safe from the Hour of Joy, or were they corrupted like all the others? Well, the player was going to find out very soon. As they make their way through this area, they notice banana peels scattered all over. Amongst all the peels, the player finds a full banana. Who knows how long it's been here for, but it looks perfectly fine to eat, so they decide to do exactly that. After eating it, the player feels full of energy. They never felt like this before. What kind of bananas were these? All of a sudden, someone drops down from high up. The player gets a better view and sees who it is. It was Manic Monkey. He's much taller and creepier than his toy counterpart. Manic is furious at the player for picking up one of his special bananas. He wants it back right now, but the player has already eaten it. This being the case, Manic Monkey was going to take it back, even if he had to reach into their stomach and grab it. The player decides to quickly run. Manic Monkey follows suit and chases after them. Ever since eating the banana, the player is much quicker than before. They can run through all the winding corridors with ease, but unfortunately Manic Monkey can do the same. It must have been the bananas that made him so manic. He ate so much of them and received an overabundance of energy. 
He had so much energy that he couldn't control himself anymore. He wanted to eat all the bananas. Every banana he didn't eat was a waste, and if this energy went to someone else, he would get even more angry. And unfortunately, the player has found themselves being that unlucky person. Whilst running away, the player has to manoeuvre through multiple obstacles. They would need to jump over hurdles and swing from ledge to ledge. But regardless of how much newfound energy the player had, Manic Monkey has way more. He wouldn't let up, and kept on chasing the player. Eventually, they both came to a steep ledge. The player was cornered and couldn't go any further. Matic Monkey approaches them and gets ready to attack. Out of the corner of the player's eye, they spot another banana. They quickly pick it up in front of Manic. He's now transfixed on the special energetic banana. There mustn't be much of them left. In fact, this was probably the last one. Manic Monkey wasted no time trying to grab the banana. He charged towards the player and they were both knocked off the ledge. The player quickly grabbed the handle above them, but Manic was too busy trying to grab the banana. In the end, he got a hold of it, but plummeted all the way down to the bottom of the ledge. In the end, his obsession with the bananas was his undoing. The player swings back onto the ledge and continues their journey through Critterland. Hopefully they can get through this area without any more delays, but something tells them this won't be the case. So I think that Manic Monkey would be a great character to see. I think that an energetic monkey would totally fit in with the Smiling Critters. I also think that the idea of the energizing bananas would create some interesting gameplay elements as well. And the fact that Manic Monkey is obsessed with them truly shows how powerful the bananas are. I also think that him having a crazed obsession and trying to retrieve the banana from the player's stomach is also very creepy. But this is only the first forgotten critter from Critterland. And as to who the next one will be, we'll just have to wait and see. Little did they know, another dangerous critter would be lurking around the next corner. Speaking of, let's introduce her now. So the next resident of Critterland is Tireless Tiger. So this cute tiger smiling critter was all about staying up late and being obsessed with coffee. She'd be seen always drinking multiple cups and staying awake all night. She even had a coffee bean as her medallion. Tireless Tiger. Sleep is for the weak. She hasn't got time for it. There's always something to do. And if she sleeps, she'll miss out for sure. She'll always be drinking coffee to keep herself awake. Coffee is the only thing keeping her going. And she wouldn't want it any other way. Scent, coffee. So like it's written, Tireless Tiger will stay up all throughout the night. Whilst everyone is sleeping, she'll be lurking in the shadows wide awake. And when she is sleeping, it's only for moments at a time. Anything more than a couple of minutes and she'd surely miss out on something important. She was obsessed with always staying awake. No matter how much the workers tried putting her to sleep, in the end it didn't go so well for those who tried to sedate her. The unlucky ones were torn to shreds by her razor sharp claws. In the end, the workers left her alone to be wide awake like she wanted. And anyone who would dare invade her space wouldn't survive for very long. So now we return back to the player. They'd been making their way through Critterland, and now arrive at another locked door. This door in particular has a special lock. It's a combination lock with multiple different symbols. All the symbols are that of the original Smiling Critters. With this many symbols, the possible combinations would be endless. The only way they're going to get through this door is by finding the correct combination. Hopefully someone has written it down somewhere close by. So they set out and try to find this symbol combination. While searching around this area, they get a strange feeling. It's like someone is watching them. No matter where the player is, there's always a pair of eyes watching them off in the distance. It was almost like the player was being hunted. They need to hurry up and find the correct combination. Eventually they arrive at a strange hallway. It's covered in orange looking fur. Whatever left all of this here must have been molting. On the ground, they see something etched on the floor. They wipe away the stray fur to get a better look. It was one of those symbols and the number that it was in the sequence. So it looks like this one is the third symbol in the combination lock. There must be more of them etched in the ground. The player just needs to clear away all the stray fur and find them. So they equip their vacuum hand and start removing all the fur from the ground. 
The more that they vacuum up, the more symbols they can see. As they vacuum, they hear a terrifying sound. They turn around and see what made it. Sitting there behind them was Tireless Tiger. She stares at the player with her wide tireless eyes. She looked like she hadn't had a wink of sleep in weeks. Her claws looked sharp and deadly, and her teeth were pointy and ferocious. The player slowly backs away down the hall. But Tireless Tiger doesn't chase them. She instead walks away into the distance. Did she want to attack the player, or was she purely just observing them? They look around for a little bit, but there's no sign of Tireless Tiger. So the player continues vacuuming up the fur and revealing the symbols. Eventually, they find the last one. Now they can enter in the correct sequence and unlock the door. As they head back to the door, they can still feel Tireless Tiger's eyes watching their every move. The player arrives at the door and enters in the correct sequence. It unlocks, and now they can enter through. But the moment they open it, Tireless Tiger is waiting for them on the other side. She leaps through the door towards the player. They dodge the attack just in time and make a run for it. They manage to loop around Tireless Tiger and run through the door. They need to keep running or else they'll be ripped to shreds. The player finds a room and quickly rushes through. They can see Tireless Tiger staring at them through the large glass window. They need to figure out how they can get past her and move forward. There's no chance she'd be going to sleep anytime soon. She'd be able to stay awake for weeks on end. If only they knew a way to put her to sleep. Unfortunately, this was the only area that wasn't infested with the sleeping gas. That's why the player came here in the first place. All of a sudden, the player hears a loud cracking sound. Tireless Tiger was striking the glass and trying to break through. And it looks like it wouldn't take her very long at all. The player needs to come up with a plan and quickly. In this room, they can see the tranquilizer darts that the workers tried to use on her but they never could manage to inject her. As soon as she saw the darts in their hands, she would attack immediately. But what if there was a way the player could use them without her seeing the darts in their hands? Suddenly, they have an idea. The player crams all of them into the vacuum hand nozzle. Just as they did that, Tyler's Tiger breaks through the glass. So far, so good. She doesn't seem to notice any tranquilizer darts on the player. She approaches them slowly, and just before she can attack, the player activates the vacuum hand. They put the airflow into reverse, and shoot all the darts at Tyler's Tiger. All of the darts hit their target, and she drifts off to sleep. For the first time in a long time, she is finally getting the sleep she needs. Her eyes close, and she is sound asleep. The player can now sneak past her and move forward safely. That was a close one. Luckily, they were smart enough to come up with that clever idea. But now, they move on to the next area of Critterland. And as to what is waiting there for the player is unknown. And as to who it is, we'll just have to wait and see. So I think that Tireless Tiger would be a great addition to the Critterland residence. I think that a tiger would make a great enemy that would be pretty scary and intimidating. The fact that she never sleeps and is always watching is also quite creepy as well. And if the player isn't careful, they could be going to sleep forever if Tireless Tiger catches them. So the next character we're introducing is Switchy Sloth. Now some of you will notice that there's something quite odd about Switchy Sloth. The first noticeable difference is that he looks to be stitched up and down the middle. Both halves are two different colours, and he doesn't have a zipper or a medallion. This is due to the terrible accident that happened to him. So, Switchy Sloth wasn't always like this. In fact, his name wasn't always Switchy Sloth as well. What his true name, medallion, and scent are is unknown. This was on account of his character bio sheet being destroyed in order to forget who he was. Ever since the accident, there has been two sides to his personality. One half is his regular, friendly self, and the other half is a twisted and evil version. It was this half that destroyed his true identity and made himself forget who he once was. The good and bad sides are constantly switching between each other, hence his new given name, Switchy Sloth. So, it was never made clear how the accident happened to poor Switchy. 
It seems that he was trying to hang from two moving machinery parts and suddenly got torn in two. As he laid there on the ground in two pieces, he was surely done for. But luckily he was saved by another mysterious character. They took his two halves and stitched them back together. And after nursing him back to full health, it seemed like all was well. But that was until his other side started to reject itself. It turned a strange off color and became a complete opposite to his friendly side. So now the two personalities live in the same body, constantly switching between each other. When either side has control, their eye will be open, and the side that lays dormant will have their eye closed. But when does the evil side take control? Well, that depends on if it's day or night. During the day, his friendly side will be active, and during the night, that's when his evil side awakens. But as we all know, places like Playcare have a controlled day and night cycle, and the same goes for Critterland as well. So technically, anywhere that it's dark and not well lit, the evil side of Switchy will be in control. So that's where he's chosen to stay. He destroyed every light source in this area and avoids it at all costs. But there's one more light that he forgot about, and soon he'll realize which one it is. So now we return back to the player. They found themselves in a dark and dimly lit area of Critterland. This place is kind of creepy, and what's worse is that they've encountered another new locking system. These locks are light activated, so when it's night, they'll lock shut and stop the critters from walking around. But in this area, it's always locked due to how dark it is. Luckily, the player knows how they can solve this problem. They know of a special grab hand that they can use to get past. They would use these hands in dark and hard to see areas when they worked at Playtime Co. They just needed to find it somewhere in this area. There seems to be a guard post further down the hallway. They were sure they would find one there, so they set off in order to find this special hand. As they walk down the dark corridors, something suddenly tries to grab them from the ceiling. The player dodges it at the last second, and hanging there in front of them is Switchy Sloth. It seems that his evil side is in control at the moment. He stares at the player with his menacing grin and evil eye. He then slinks back up to the ceiling and waits to attack the player again. So now they need to be careful of when he'll attack again. Most times if the player sees some faint falling dust, it means he'll attack from above. So the player just needs to dodge it and move forward. Eventually they make it to the guard post storage room. And there it was waiting for them. This new item is called the Glow Hand. It's a transparent grab hand that glows very bright when activated. It usually produces enough light to brighten any area. It's quite a simple design and function, but it's exactly what the player needs. They just need to be aware of how much time it has when using it. It'll only glow for a short while, then it needs to turn off and recharge. It was an infinite light source, similar to Glimmer Glowfish, but it comes at a short-lived cost. So now they exit this room and head back to the light lock. As soon as Switchy Sloth reappears, the player activates the glow hand. The bright glow of the hand has a sudden effect on Switchy. This wasn't just an ordinary light, it seems to mimic sunlight perfectly. And then before he knew it, he switched back to his friendly side. Switchy falls from the ceiling and notices the player. He wants to help them and leads them back to the light door lock. So they both walk together down the well-lit corridor, but eventually the glow hand would need to recharge. And the moment that it does, Switchy is back to his evil persona. He leaps back to the ceiling and waits patiently to attack the player. He needs to destroy that glow hand. When it's done charging, it'll surely bring him back to his friendly self. So evil Switchy must stop this from happening at all costs. The player now quickly rushes back to the door. Switchy will make many more attempts to attack the player now that he knows they have the glow hand. But the sooner the player can make it to the door and unlock the light lock, the sooner they can get to safety. The glow hand hasn't reached its full power yet, but by the time it reaches full charge, they will be at the light lock. So until then, they just need to make a run for it. Every few steps here and there, Switchy will attack. The player just needs to dodge these attacks as best as they can. Finally, they reach the light lock. They can now activate the hand and let the lock charge up with the bright light. But whilst it's charging, they need to be on the lookout for Switchy. 
When they see him, they would need to stop what they're doing and shine the light on him. When they do, the friendly side of Switchy will awaken and run away. He didn't want to be anywhere near the player, in hopes that he wouldn't harm them if he was far away. But once he was back in the darkness, his evil version would reawaken. So after a short while of charging the light and keeping Switchy at bay, the door finally opens. The player rushes through the door and closes it on the other side. They can see a hand switch that the glow hand can fit in. If they leave the glow hand plugged into this switch, it'll permanently light up the area they were just in. So they go ahead and plug it in. The area that Switchy Sloth resides in suddenly gets bathed in a bright light. All the backup lights turn on and now this area is permanently lit. Switchy Sloth returns to his friendly self and hopefully he can keep it that way. He's thankful for what the player did and hopefully he can return the favour someday. But for now, the play continues on with their journey. So I think the idea of Switchy Sloth would be pretty interesting. I think that both the good and evil side of him would make for an interesting gameplay mechanic as well. The fact that he's always battling between his good and bad side and always switching is also a pretty cool concept. It seems for now that he has full control and will remain as his friendly persona. But as to if he'll stay that way forever is unknown. Will he revisit the player in his evil form or will he remain his friendly self? I guess until then, we'll just have to wait and see. So this mysterious critter is known as Caring Capybara. This helpful and caring critter is quite special indeed. Her specific role in the factory is to repair and patch up any of the injured or damaged toys. She would go around from area to area and care for whoever needed her. Her main specialty was using her special knitting needle hand to mend other toys ripped and tattered fabric. With a whole bunch of soft and cuddly toys inside a harsh and dangerous factory, they were all sure to get some rips and tears on their body. And every time that happened, Caring Capybara was there to help. She cared so much about her job that she modified her own hand into knitting needles. This way she could quickly patch up anyone who needed her help. Throughout all this time, she's cared for a whole bunch of injured toys. From a number of her smiling critter friends to Huggy and Kissy. She's even fixed Poppy's dress a couple of times in the past. But as quick and speedy as Karen Capybara was, she didn't always make it on time. It seems that when some of the toys have met their untimely demise, another sinister force got to them first. Also, she was only one critter. And as much as she wanted to help everyone at all times, it just wasn't possible. Caring Capybara. If someone needs care, she'll be there. She'll always make everyone feel better. If a heart needs mending, she'll be attending. It's only fair to spread a little care. Scent Cookies. So now she resides in Critterland. She spends most of her time patching up the other toys who live here. And soon enough, she'd meet the player and help them on their journey. Speaking of, we now return to the player. They still haven't made it out of Critterland and they're a little on edge about what dangerous critter they'll meet next. As they make their way forward, it looks like the next creepy critter was soon to be revealed. They can see, poking around a corner, a sharp and pointy hand. They can only imagine who or what it belongs to. It was probably a terrible toy creature that would rip them to shreds. But as the player got closer, that wasn't the case at all. In front of them was the happy and cheerful caring capybara. She seemed quite pleased to see the player and likewise they were relieved to see her. It turns out that this little capybara critter wasn't hostile at all. In fact, she wanted to help the player. Carrying capybara hasn't seen someone like the player in a long time. Ever since the Hour of Joy, there hasn't been a worker left alive at the factory. She always liked the workers. They were kind to her and in turn she was kind to them. So seeing the player standing in front of her brings back all those happy memories and that's the reason she decides to help them. So she sets off and leads the player to the closest exit out of this area. It seems that this was a particular area of Critterland where Karen Capybara did most of her work. It was also where she brought Switchy Sloth when he was torn in two. She's cared for many injured critters in the past, and many of them were cared for in this area. When a toy was injured, she would always arrive on time as quickly as she could, and the way she did this was by a series of secret conveyor belts. She would hop on and zoom to many different areas of the factory, and the specific conveyor belt she used would zoom quickly out of Critterland. 
It would most likely take the player to where they need to be in no time at all. But when they get there, there's only one small problem. It seems that the conveyor belt has been torn to shreds. Without a moving track, the doors won't open. Karen Capybara can sew up the damaged belt, but first she needs some extra material. So it's up to the player to set out and try and collect any pieces of material they can find. Anything will do, it just needs to be a material that can be sewn together. So anything like clothing, rags or bed sheets. But in Critterland there wasn't many items of clothing or sheets. Not too many humans were ever in this area to begin with, but still the player needs to keep searching around. After searching and searching they finally see something that can work. Up top on the ceiling was a large Critterland flag that would be perfect to repair the conveyor belt. All they need to do is find a way up there and grab it. So the player starts jumping up from platform to platform. They need to be careful not to fall or else they wouldn't survive from a drop this high. Eventually after carefully platforming they make it to the flag. They grab it and head back to Karen Capybara. When they do, the flag was the perfect material to fix the belt. She got to work sewing everything back together and before they knew it the conveyor belt was repaired. Finally they could activate it and the player would be on their way. But Karen Capybara couldn't go with the player. She needs to stay here and help her fellow critters in case they ever get injured. But she was sure they'd meet again somewhere along the way. But for now they would need to go their separate ways. So the player switches it on and away they go. The conveyor belt starts moving and now they just need to sit back and wait. Soon they'll be transported out of here and they'll be on their way to meet back up with Poppy. Hopefully she was okay and they could complete their mission in confronting the prototype. But just how far Poppy is further ahead than the player is uncertain. And the player is going to have to quickly catch up with her and keep her safe. So I think that Karen Capybara would be another great addition to our roster of Forgotten Critters. It's always great to see another friendly character help out the player, and this critter in particular was very helpful indeed. I think the idea of her being a seamstress slash healer for all the other toys in the factory is pretty interesting as well. Also the fact that she has helped some of the main characters is pretty cool as well. But the sad reality is that not all the other characters in this factory are as friendly as Karen Capybara. And as to if the next character will be just as friendly is unknown. And until then we'll just have to wait and see. Let's meet the next Forgotten Critter character. And this new character is called Bandit Bat. Hence the name, this smiling critter is modelled after the nocturnal cave dwelling animal, the bat. His design was quite different to all the other critters as well. Instead of arms he has large wings. And in addition to his unique design, he also was quite the character. So Bandit Bat is known to be a thief who loves stealing gold. He'd sleep all day and then at night he would make his move. Throughout the years he's become quite a notorious bandit, which is what landed him his name. Bandit Bat, your gold is as good as gone. With this bandit around you better not make a sound, lock your gold up tight and put up a fight because nothing will stop this greedy bat from getting what he wants. Sent Blackberry. So you might have noticed that in his character bio it mentions not making a sound. Well that's because Bandit Bat is a blind critter and the way that he can see is through sound. Just like a regular bat he uses sonar to map out his surroundings. So wherever there was the sound of coins, Bandit Bat would surely be there. But it turns out it wasn't just coins he was after. Anything that made a similar sound would trigger him to swoop down and attack. Whether it be keys, jewellery or anything metallic, Bandit Bat was sure to swoop down and grab it. So workers had to be extra careful when dealing with Bandit. They were to wear nothing metallic or have keys on them. And by no means at all were they supposed to have coins in their pockets. The workers tried to capture and contain Bandit Bat, but he would always find the trickiest hiding places to roost until night time. The workers couldn't find him anywhere and eventually just avoided him at all costs. They never found out where he would secretly roost, but unfortunately the player would soon find out where this secret spot would be. So now we return back to the player. They've been riding the conveyor belt for a couple of minutes now, surely they would be at the exit soon. They look behind them and see how far this belt has taken them. And as they turn back around, they see something hanging inside the conveyor belt chute. There's no time to dodge it. The player slams into this upside down creature as it awakens in the process. Bandit Bat panics and screeches once he's woken up. 
with all this commotion, it causes the chute to collapse and the player falls through the belt. They crash down from the ceiling and land on the hard floor. Whatever that creature is, flies out of the overhead chute and roosts in another spot. Great, now what are they going to do? That conveyor belt chute was their surefire ticket out of Critterland. But now, thanks to this smiling critter, that's all been ruined. As the player gets a closer look, they can see who it is. It turns out that it's Bandit Bat. The player tries to sneak past him while he's sleeping upside down, but they accidentally kick a coin with their foot. The coin rings out and Bandit Bat immediately wakes up and snatches it up. These coins were littered all over the ground. They must have fallen from the chute up above. The player needs to be careful where they step. If they wake Bandit Bat anymore, he'll surely find the player and it'll all be over. So very carefully they walk down the hallway and try not to step on any of the coins. It seems like only the sound of the coins is enough to set him off. All the player needs to do is get to the end of this hallway. Once they get through the doors, they will be safe from Bandit Bat. Eventually after stepping over all the coins, they reach the door. They look behind them and can't see any sign of Bandit Bat. Where has he gone off to? Regardless, it doesn't really matter. The player just needs to exit through these doors to get out of here. But the moment they open them, Bandit Bat swoops down and grabs them. With the player in his clutches, Bandit Bat flies higher and higher. The player needs to repeatedly strike him in the face with their grab hands. If they hit him enough, eventually he'll drop them. But they need to be quick. If they wait too long, then they'll be too high up and the fall will be fatal. So after striking Bandit Bat a number of times, he eventually lets go. The player falls back down to safety and runs to the door. Once they make it through, they trap Bandit Bat inside. Now the player is free to move on to the next area of Critterland. Because with Bandit Bat, they were thrown off course. So now they have to find their bearings again and figure out exactly where they are. It seems that the conveyor belt chute isn't an option anymore. And now they need to make it through this area out in the open. The player looks up and to their surprise, they can see Bandit Bat has somehow made it into this area. He's just hanging from the ceiling. It seems he's asleep at the moment. Hopefully he doesn't plan on attacking the player anytime soon. But with Bandit Bat hanging out in the open, the player would always have to be looking over their shoulder. They need to give him another place to hide and roost. Once they've done that, he surely won't bother them anymore. So the player looks around at their surroundings. They can see a number of overhead air vents. So they open a bunch of them in hopes that he might fly in. All in all, the player opens about five vents. And sure enough, Bandit Bat flies straight inside one. The player closes the vent and now they can travel ahead safely. As they make it towards the next area of Critterland, they'll have to ready themselves for whatever comes next. And as to what that will be, we'll just have to wait and see. So I think that Bandit Bat would be a great addition to our Forgotten Critters roster of characters. I think that a flying enemy character would definitely offer some interesting gameplay mechanics, that's for sure. And also the thought of always looking up would definitely keep the player on their toes. They need to be careful to move around and not make too much noise. And if they aren't careful, Bandit Bat will be the last thing they see. So the next Forgotten Critter character we're introducing is called Grumpy Groundhog. This grumpy little guy is quite the character. His official backstory is that he's a coal miner who works underground and isn't too happy about it. Day after day, he digs underground mining for all the coal he can. Even his emblem is a piece of coal. He'd always be covered in dirt and coal dust from his hard day's work. But that's the way he liked it. There was no one to bother him whilst he was underground. It was just him and the coal. The only time he was grumpy was when he had to talk to others. So underground is where he stayed. He'd dig and dig as much as he could. He dug so much that eventually something awful happened to poor Grumpy. And ever since this tragic accident, Grumpy Groundhog was never the same. Grumpy Groundhog. Better steer clear. This is one Grumpy Groundhog. His one and only goal is to mine for coal. Get in his way and you'll surely pay. Scent, toasted marshmallow. So like his bio says, Grumpy spent all his time down in the mines. But the Playtime Co factory didn't have a mine. This didn't stop Grumpy though. He was determined to find coal if it was the last thing he ever did. So Grumpy started burrowing deep down below the factory. 
He would chip away at all the concrete until he found his precious coal. But the more he dug, the more it was apparent there was nothing there. And the lack of coal made Grumpy even more and more angry. But one day, Grumpy dug a little too deep, and instead of striking coal, he actually struck an underground gas pipe. It ruptured and filled Grumpy's underground caverns with gas. And this gas in particular was in fact Catnap's red nightmare smoke. The pipe kept leaking the red gas day after day, and the longer Grumpy stayed underground, the more he was affected by it. Eventually, he morphed into an unrecognisable creature. This twisted creature version of Grumpy would lurk down below in the mines that he created. Luckily, the red gas eventually subsided. When the player diverted the red smoke in Chapter 3, it cleared up the gas leak. But it was already too late. Grumpy Groundhog was already too far gone. And all that remained was this twisted version. Here and there, he'd resurface and hoard random objects underground. And one specific object would lead the player deep down below, where they'd come face to face with Grumpy. Speaking of, let's return back to the player. So our main protagonist has found themselves in quite a pickle. Before them is yet another large metal door. It's securely locked and requires two special keys to open it. There's already one of the special keys inside the lock, but the other one is missing. These keys must have been pretty important. So important that the workers had a tracking device linked to the keys. The player grabs the tracking device and hopes to find the last key. So they've been walking all over this area hoping to get a beat on this key. Eventually the tracker starts picking up on something. The player starts to follow wherever it leads. Unfortunately it leads down into a deep dark cavern. The key has to be somewhere down in here. As much as they didn't want to enter this cavern, they knew they had to if they wanted to get out of here. So they enter inside and follow the tracker. They venture through the underground tunnels listening to the beeps from the tracker. But suddenly they get another reading on the screen. Whatever it is, it seems to be moving. It looks like the workers must have put tracking devices inside the critters as well. And whatever this critter is, it's moving right towards them. The player needs to hide quickly. They duck behind a wooden crate and hope for the best. They peer around and see what the tracker has picked up. It was Grumpy Groundhog. He's lurking around the tunnels searching for whoever has entered his mine uninvited. The player has to stay hidden as best as they can. Because if this twisted groundhog finds them, he'll be more than just grumpy. Finally, the coast was clear. The player now continues their search for the key. But they need to be careful. They would need to use the tracker sparingly. They still need to know where the key is, but the beeps from the tracker will alert Grumpy. So the player continues the search whilst being very careful. And every time Grumpy reappeared, they would need to move quickly and hide once more. Eventually, after a bunch of tracking and hiding, they find the special key. Now all they need to do is get out of these tunnels and back to the lock. As they turn the next corner, Grumpy ambushes them right away. He's furious that the player is down here, and he will make sure they don't escape. The player makes a run for it, and now the chase is on. The player needs to remember the way back to the surface, so they need to navigate through all the tunnels and make the correct turns. And if they make a wrong turn and reach a dead end, Grumpy would get them. But luckily for the player, they remember what way they came in. They rush out of the cavern and rush over to the lock. But it seems like Grumpy hasn't exited the cavern and chased after them. He was satisfied enough with the player leaving his underground domain. He slinks back into the darkness to be alone once again. Now the player can use the key and open the door. As they continue on their journey through Critterland, they need to prepare for whatever comes next. And as to who that will be, we'll just have to wait and see. So I think the idea of Grumpy Groundhog would be pretty interesting to see. I think that the underground mines would be a creepy environment to explore. And also the tracker would open up some interesting gameplay mechanics as well. All in all, I'd say that Grumpy Groundhog would be another great addition to the Forgotten Critters. So previously in our Poppy Playtime character concept series, we've been following the main protagonist on their journey through Critterland. And after encountering multiple different characters along the way, they have finally reached the end of this area. And it seems there's no more forgotten critters that inhabit this area. Now all that's left to do is find the exit. Each and every character has been a unique challenge for the player. Although they've met some friendly characters, 
the majority of them have been out to get them. The characters we've seen throughout have been Manic Monkey, Tireless Tiger, Switchy Sloth, Kieran Capybara, Bandit Bat, and Grumpy Groundhog. And although the player has met all the residents of Critterland, that doesn't mean the threat was over. Because with all these critters failing to stop the player, this made one individual very displeased. This individual being the prototype. The prototype has witnessed each interaction with the player, and every time a critter failed, it angered them more and more. The prototype eventually decided that these worthless critters were no longer useful, so instead they would just dispose of them all. We've seen the same done to Catnap, and unfortunately the critters of Critterland would suffer the same fate. So one by one, the prototype disposed of all of them. After all was said and done, only one critter was spared. Karen Capybara was left alone and unharmed. The prototype has another plan in mind for her, a plan that she wouldn't realize she'd be a major part of. The parts of all these destroyed critters were scattered all throughout the main area. Eventually, Karen Capybara would stumble across this mess of broken toys. Without a moment's notice, she quickly tries to repair them. But with so many mangled pieces scattered about, there was no time to repair each critter individually. So Karen Capybara did the only thing she could. In order to save them all, she sewed them together to form one large critter. It wasn't perfect, but she was running out of time. She tried the best she could, and in the end she managed to save them all. This large critter was made up of all different parts of Manic, Tireless, Bandit, and Grumpy. But after Karen Capybara was finished, she noticed something. Switchy Sloth was missing. He wasn't a part of this body, nor were any of his pieces scattered about. Maybe the prototype missed him, or maybe they didn't know he even existed. Considering he destroyed his own character bio, there wouldn't be any record of Switchy Sloth at the factory. Hopefully he got away unharmed. So for the moment, the patched up critter she created seemed to be doing fine. But suddenly this mishmash of critters morphed into something much more grotesque. The body sprouted a large mouth filled with teeth, and protruding from it were the four heads attached to strange looking tendrils. It seems that this creature has now become corrupted, just like how Switchy Sloth became corrupted after she repaired him as well. What was going on? It seems when Karen Capybara sews critters back together, they turn evil. But why? All she wanted to do was help. It wasn't clear why this was happening, but she needs to act fast. This patched up critter is now going to hunt down the player. Karen Capybara needs to warn them before the patched one attacks. So that's exactly what she does. Now we return back to the player. Finally, they've located the exit to Critterland. After everything they've been through, now they can escape this area. Hopefully they're not too far behind Poppy, and maybe there's still a chance that they can find her. Just as they approach the exit, a large metal security door slams shut in front of it. Now what was it? The player looks around to see all the doors in this area have been sealed shut. It seems that a security protocol is now in effect. But what could have caused this? They turn back around and see Karen Capybara is right behind them. This was a pleasant surprise. The two of them managed to meet up again. But it wasn't under the best circumstances. Karen Capybara explains to the player what happened. She tells them that she accidentally made a monster out of all the forgotten critters. And now this patched up monster is on its way to stop the player. Also, the security scanners have never scanned a monster of this magnitude. And whilst it's still moving around this area, the security protocol has kicked in. The only way the doors can open again is to stop this patched critter. She explains that the critters who make up this monster are too far gone. And now there is only one solution. Both the player and Karen Capybara have to lead the patched up critter to the incinerator room. Here, they could effectively destroy it for good, but they need to move quickly as it's on its way here right now. So both of them make their way to the incinerator room to get prepared. Once the patched critter gets led here, then they can take it out. Now the player just has to find it, but that doesn't take very long at all. The patched one finds the player as they're walking down a hallway. The player sees this hulking monstrosity with their own eyes. It's made of multiple different body parts, and each of the critter's heads are protruding out of this creepy looking mouth. Whatever this thing is, it surely isn't the critter's it once was. 
and there's no trace of them inside this creature. It's now just a corrupted mutant who is set on ending the player. Suddenly, the patched one starts charging towards them. The player springs into action and starts running towards the incinerator room. All they need to do is make sure it stays there long enough and then they can toast them for good. But the patched one is faster than it looks. The player has to keep up the pace and run as quick as they can, because if they slow down for even a second, it would all be over. Eventually, they both make it to the incinerator room. Now, Karen Capybara and the player have to act quick. They quickly climb up to the upper level and activate the controls. So, in this gameplay segment, there's a number of different controls that need to be activated. Karen Capybara would be in charge of the flame emitter, and the player would need to hold the patched one in place with the remote crane. If they both work together, then surely they could destroy this patched critter. So, whilst doing this, they would need to dodge the attacks from the patched one as well. Each time, a different head would launch towards them. The player would need to bat it away just in time to avoid being attacked. Karen Capybara would also be open to attacks as well, so sometimes the player has to stop what they're doing and protect her. Once they latch onto the creature, she would then activate the flame emitter. A stream of fire would jet towards it and burn it to a crisp. But eventually, with all its massive strength, the patch one would shake free. So they both need to repeat the process until the patched one is no more. Eventually, they would get to the last stage of the battle. Just before Karen Capybara delivers the last volley of flame, she hesitates. She looks at what she created. The faces of all her friends stare back at her. But the truth is, they aren't her friends anymore. In the end, what they've become is another twisted toy creature that haunts this factory. She should have never put them back together again. For the first time in her life, she shouldn't have cared. But that's not in her nature. She just couldn't do it. And at the last second, while she hesitated, the patched one took its opportunity. It quickly strikes Karen Capybara with one of its heads. The impact immediately knocks her out. Now what's the player going to do? They can't hold the crane arm and press the flame emitter at the same time. It looks like there's nothing they could do. As they hold the patched one in place, it gears up to strike with all four heads directly at the player. Just as it strikes, one last jet of fire incinerates the patched one. The player looks over, and to their surprise, it's Switchy Sloth. He's arrived in the nick of time and activated the flame emitter. The final jet of flame reduces the patched one to a pile of ashes. Finally, it's been defeated. All of a sudden, the security protocol is lifted and all the doors once again open up. Karen Capybara wakes up and is conscious once again. Now, all three of them head towards the exit to Critterland. They say their farewells to the player as the player makes their way out of this area. Both Switchy Sloth and Karen Capybara have agreed to stay in Critterland. They need to stay here and protect any new critters that arrive in Critterland. As the player exits this area, they continue their journey to meet Poppy. The player has no idea what new challenges lay ahead of them. And as to what challenges they'll be, we'll just have to wait and see.